Let us talk about region of operation and testing the region because where it operates that will decide what operation it has done. For example, in saturation it is a switch, in cutoff it is also a switch, in act region it is amplifier. So, we will be really talking about testing the region of operation. Transistor is operated in four regions. Biasing decides and the actual terminal voltage will decide the actual operating region. We can use KVL and KCL across components and terminal voltages are calculated and then region is decided. So, first what we give supply may not decide always. That is why it is not the supply voltage decide, it is the terminal voltage decides that became the important uh, observation in this chapter. So, you need to know how it is really working. So, always do not base your conclusion on supply potential, but base your conclusion on terminal potential. As we really discussed in the earlier lecture, both forward saturation and on switch, forward reverse active and amplifier, reverse and forward inverse active or invert region or act, it acts as attenuator reverse and reverse it is cut off off switch that is the meaning of switching here. Now, let us go for illustrative examples because I, too much of theory is also boring. So, I am trying to illustrate ideas with illustrative examples or problems. Check for the region of operation for silicon BJT with beta 50. Look at this transistor, NPN transistor, P is given here, so forward bias and positive is given to N, reverse bias. So, you may feel input is forward, output is reverse, that is why it is in active region, that is not the real. As I told you, do not base your argument on the supply potential, but base your argument on terminal potential. VBE is one terminal junction, VCB another junction. This junction is output, this junction is input. So, let us calculate and then decide, but of course, why should we calculate? Do you mean that this potential will change here, the polarity will change here? Yes. For example, ICRC is here. If ICRC is 13 volts and this is 12 volts, and this will be minus 1. Once again, if this ICRC is 13 volts and this is 12 volts, this will become minus. When you give minus to N, it is forward bias. So, therefore, according to supply, it may be reverse bias, but according to terminal potential, it is forward bias. That is why I am saying, let us conclude our base, basing upon terminal voltage, not on the supply, but immediately the question will come, can the drop be more than supply? My, my answer is very simple, it is possible. This drop is due to the input and output, therefore, this can be more than output supply, input supply, but that cannot be more than both supplies. For example, this is 12 and this is 2, this cannot be more than 14 but it can be more than 12 because this VBB decides IB that IB decides with IC. Therefore, this drop can be more than supply and hence at the outset, I am going to conclude my argument. I can decide input bias based on supply, but output bias I cannot decide based on supply because this may change. Whereas, it is all because of early effect. For example, when you see early effect, input current affects output, that is early effect. And because the input current affecting output, this drop may be more than the supply and this will be negative, can be negative. Similarly, some student asked me saying, sir, early effect is also there from output to input, yes. 
as output voltage increase input voltage is getting affected but the polarity will not change that's why there will be a slight effect not to the extent of changing polarity therefore with all this discussion i am saying if they are really asking you to check and then continue don't doubt always if they are asking us to doubt which region is operating always doubt at the output side but not at the input side therefore at the input side i am taking for granted this supply will decide forward so input is forward output we need to confirm that's the question actually input is forward output status we have we need to confirm that's the problem given to us and therefore i said all this output can be more than the out output supply because ic is developed because of vcc and vbb input bias is decided by inspection but output bias is decided only after calculation that calculation we have to do that's why this calculation is our problem here vb is input bias vcb is output bias if vcb is positive given to n then bz is reverse bias it works in the active region please remember we are taken for granted input is forward bias according to the table biasing table given look at here if input is forward please come with me here if input is forward there are two options for output if output is forward it is saturation if output is reverse it is active so i am going to create two methods for our understanding one method is called active method second method is called saturation method all this is because input is forward bias now look at this method i am taking input is forward so i am taking active method after calculating vcb if vcb is positive this is active region if vcb is negative it is forward bias at output so saturation region right now this is all because of the early effect and the current equations that we have decided as i have spoken all this case therefore input bias is decided by supply potential and output bias is decided by terminal potential so let me go to active method apply input kvl vbb minus ibrb minus vb active in that why should i say active because i assume active method substitute vbe 0.7 and solve for ib once ib comes ic equal to beta times of ib and please note it very carefully ic equal to beta times of ib is valid only in active region and 2 minus ib into this point therefore ib becomes this much 0.013 milliampere and then 0.013 milliampere ic is beta times of ib 0.65 milliamperes therefore this is the way to calculate then go to output kvl vcc minus icrc minus vcb minus vb active zero that means i am voluntarily coming through vcb i am telling the equations vbb minus ibrb minus vb is zero vcc minus icrc minus vcb minus vb is zero these are the calculations that we have okay and two equations of a transistor and then we be active is 0.7 ic we know vcc is given if you substitute everything and solve for vcb this became 8.7 and it's positive positive means output is reverse and active region so this is the conclusion and uh, therefore pjt is in active region because vcb is positive means reverse bias active region so that's about our illustration problem 1 obtain voltage ratings of a npn common emitter transistor at room temperature so because we need to understand the voltage ratings in order to estimate different calculations now look at this characteristics if you are at input wanted like to here for the convenience normally we are not supposed to take voltage on the axis 
x axis because it is a this is a dependent quantity, but still we take it because we want to explain it behaving like a diode. So, points minus infinity to look at here minus infinity to 0 that is called cutoff. So, if you put 0 here this is the maximum value and uh, once you come to 0 and then 0.6 is cut in voltage, 0.7 is active, 0.8 is saturation. Similarly, for a germanium minus 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And when it comes to output, minus infinity to 0 0.2, this is the value. So, it is and when you when you are taking 0 0.2, please understand you are taking maximum value. So, minus infinity to 0 0.1 and then 0.1 is the maximum. So, please do not forget to call this, this is VBE cutoff, this is VCE saturation and that is the meaning you see. Conclusion, germanium requires less voltage than silicon. Nice humidity for germanium is minus point, point 0.3 minus of minus point 0.1 is point 0.4. Nice humidity for silicon is point 0.8 minus of minus point 0.1 is point. 0 actually this is approximately pointed. Therefore, silicon has more noise immunity than germanium. At temperature changes, as temperature changes voltage ratings also change. Problem 3, repeat illustrative problem I 1 using saturation method because as input is forward you have two options. One is saturation method, other is act 2. We have finished act 2. So, we are going for saturation method same problem VBB minus IBRB minus VBE sat you have to say there and you can solve for IB here and once you solve for IB do not multiply IC equal beta times of IB because IC equal beta of IBC is IC is not equal to beta times of IB because it is saturation region in saturation region current gain is not defined. So, do not calculate it, just keep IB there. Then, if you take from output KVL, the VCC minus, I am straight away coming ICRC minus VC is 0, say VC is sat. How much VC is sat? We have to substitute 0.2. As I told you, this is 0.2 is a maximum quantity. When you subtract maximum quantity, this becomes minimum quantity. So, maximum quantity subtracted minimum quantity is developed here that is the 2.95. So, what is the conclusion here? If I B is greater than I C minimum by beta then B J T is in saturation region. In fact, if you cross check this answer I C minimum is 2.5 2.95 by beta and I B you have 0 0.0. Therefore, our conclusion should be same. The conclusion we got in the first problem is active. Now, also it has to be active. You cannot have two different conclusions. That means, this is not satisfying. Please remember, this is required for saturation. This is given. So, what is given if it is not more than required? This is not in saturation. Four. Fourth problem. Calculate RB maximum for transistor in cutoff for transistor in cutoff. Say for example, VBB here, RB, RC and all this. So, what what you feel here? Negative is given to P, so reverse bias. Positive given to N, reverse. Both are reverse bias, therefore it is in cutoff. When input is reverse, IB is 0, then this cannot create any drop. That is why I am telling one conclusion. When input is reverse, you do not need to doubt at the output also. Input decided by input supply, output decided also by input supply, no need to calculate. That is why problem is not to check where it is operating. Problem is to design the value of Rb. And look at here. When the input is reverse biased, output is directly decided by supply. Therefore, both inputs and outputs are reverse biased and BJT is in cutoff. Now, minus VBB IB RC naught minus VB cutoff is equal to 0. 
minus VBE minus N, therefore, suppose if this VBB is 2 volts, VB cutoff we know minus 0.1 because he said germanium and then if you calculate you will get maximum. You know why you are getting maximum? Because you are adding maximum quantity here. By adding maximum quantity of the germanium you get this maximum value and we are assuming IC0 is 64 micro. So when you are taking 64 micro you can get this RB maximum. This is to illustrate you how to handle a problem on cutoff. Problem 5. Calculate RC minimum if transistor is in saturation. Beta is 19. Please understand beta is 19. Some people thought it is 90. It is not 90. It is 19. Because in switching, beta will be normally small. So because we are talking about switching, testing the region, and it is taken as given as 19. This is germanium transistor for example. Look at here. From the input you calculate IB. From the output you calculate IC. And compare you will get the answer. Now look at here. Input KVL. VCC minus 5 minus 100 IB minus 0.8. Why should we take 0.8? Because VB is sat if we take silicon. Okay. Then VCC 5 minus here and if you say if you take 5 minus RC you have to calculate a value here. So from the input you calculate IB from the output you calculate IC if IC is greater than or equal to X if uh, that is equal if you take that is minimum. Why? Because look at your output KVL, you can get this value 5 minus 0.2 by RC by 19. So, this is how you can cross check IC by beta should be the required value and then IB is the given value. If the given value is more than required value, you can get RC. The whole answer is in terms of RC. Now, you can estimate RC. Because I am not calculating this value because it is an illustrative, it is a classroom problem. You calculate it. That's a procedure. Sixth problem. Calculate RC2 for silicon BJT with Q1 active, Q2 saturation. This is very interesting. There are two transistors. One is active, other is saturation. And input is given as 5 volts. If input is 5, diode is off. If diode is off, you have to take this way. Say this is 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. This is 0 0.8. You know why this is 0 0.8 actually? Because this is saturation. So, the condition is IB2 is greater than IC2 minimum by beta. IB2 is IE1 plus I. You know what's I here? This is I. So, what's the condition? IB2 should be greater than IC2 by beta and then I here. What is IE1? I plus IB2. What is IE1? IB1 plus IC1. So, you, you apply input KVL, calculate IB1 and then IC1 is equal to beta times of IB. IC1 is beta times of IB1 is valid. You know why? Because it is active. From IB1 and IC1, you will get IE1 and from that IE1 and I you will get IB2 from output you will get IC2 and finally IB2 is greater than IC2 minimum by beta that's how we are going to calculate so look at that 5 minus IB1 IB RB minus 0.7 minus 0.7 minus 0.7 minus 0.8 IB1 will come then IC is beta times of IB1 then IE1 is IC1 plus IB then IE2 is IE1 plus I. This is IB2. Then IB2 is greater than 5 minus 0.2 by this. This is IC2 value. And if that is from that, you can calculate RC2. You can calculate RC2 here. Seventh question. How to know that BJT is on or saturation? 
how to know that BJT is on switch or saturation? There are two ways to test the region of operation. One is IB is greater than IC minimum of beta. If this condition is satisfied, BJT is saturation. If this condition is not, then it is said to be in active region. Second way is to calculate VCB. If VCB is positive, then the BJT is reverse bias, therefore output an active region. If VCB is negative, output uh, junction is forward, therefore saturation. Therefore, there are two ways to know whether a transistor is an on or saturation. One is by saturation method, that is IC, IB is greater than IC minimum by beta. Second is VCB potential or polarity. Problem 8. How to decide the value of beta of BJT? How to decide the value of beta? Look at here. IB is IC minimum by beta. If beta increases, IC by beta will decrease. If the required value is very small, any noise can provide such a small value. Therefore, beta taken a large value is not good. Similarly, if beta decreases, IC minimum beta increases, no noise can produce such a minimum value, such a value of IB. Therefore, beta is large for amplifier, less for switch. That's why we have taken 19 in switching. Maybe in amplifiers you can take even 100, 200, any like that. So ultimately beta is large for amplifier and small for switch. Question number 9. How to decide the value of VCC? Just now my previous question was the value of beta. Now I am talking about VCC. Solution. If VCC is larger, if VCC is large for amplifier because RC is large and hence gain is large. VCC is small for switch. You know why? Because R is small and hence switching is fast. Power dissipation is also small. Therefore, the conclusion is very simple. Take VCC large for amplifier and small for switch. That's why I'm saying most of the times you will most of the time you'll be taking VCC is 12 volts for amplifier, same transistor, and when you come to switching, VCC is 5 volts. I10, what are the different transistor and their applications? A for germanium, B for silicon. AC125 is a germanium transistor with a beta 125, that is typical value. When I mention 125, it's not a value because beta is not fixed but a range, therefore it is a typical value. Then BC147 is a silicon transistor radio frequency. BF195 radio frequency silicon transistor. BFW10 or 11 basically FET silicon voltage gain is 10 or 11. Please understand in FET there is no current gain that's why voltage gain is mentioned. When BJT there is a current gain that's why beta is mentioned. SL100, SK100, they are NPN and PNP transistors, complementary transistor, 2 and 4000, that 400 is switching BJT because 1 and 400 is a switching diode. So this is also an indication to understand. Now, all that illustrations, the concept I want to give is done. Now, let us see how the question papers are asking questions and to check our concept is really sufficient for our study. Worked out examples. At problem 1, at 25 degrees Celsius, the color trimeter voltage drop of a silicon transistor at saturation is approximately 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. The point is this, you can see this one, 0.2 actually, but roughly it is 0.3. That is, the value option is B. Then, biasing of the junction function. So biasing and the functions we need to see. Emitter base junction is forward, collector base junction is reverse. Automatically this is high gain amplifier. Emitter base junction both are forward, saturation region. Then reverse bias, forward bias. That is low gain amplifier because low gain means what? Attenuator. 
both reverse bias is a cutoff. Therefore, just asking, so this is the option, option is B. So, matching option is B. Problem 3. A BZ operates as a switch in the active region of transistor with no signal, with small signal, with a large signal. Please understand, when you talk about a switch, it is basically high currents or no currents. So, therefore, when you are talking about a switch, it is high current, saturation, then we can say large current is mentioned here. Therefore, option is D. D is under large currents. Because if both are forward, it acts as an on switch. On means more current. More means large. Problem number 4. What is the biasing condition of junction in bipolar transistor to work as an amplifier? Already we studied. Input should be forward, output should be reverse. So, we need to see forward and then both forward, near forward and reverse. So, option is B here. Problem number 5. If a transistor is operating with both of its junction forward biased, but with the collector based junction greater than the emitter based junction, then it is operated in forward active and reverse saturation, reverse active, forward active, forward saturation. The option is B. What it means B? Both junctions are forward, collector is bias greater than emitter. That means that the output bias is greater than the input. Therefore, BJT works in cutoff region that is reverse saturation mode. Because if both are forward, look at the problem here. He already said both are forward bias. So, it is basically a switch. So, when both are forward, it is either uh, saturation, reverse saturation or forward saturation. Forward saturation means output has to be lesser. It should be almost 0, but it is in this case it is greater. See, suppose if it is a on, on means output voltage should be 0, but it is greater. That is why it is saturation because both are forward, but, but output is greater. That means it is acting as reverse saturation. That So, option is B. If for a silicon NPN transistor, base emitter voltage is 0.7 okay the collector base voltage is 0.2 then the transistor operated see this is collector to base means junction so how to calculate vc vcb the moment vcb is 0.2 that is greater than 0 greater than 0 means positive positive given to n is reverse bias when the when output is reverse bias we should say active mode so, active mode is basically to say it is A. So, you see my explanation. Given NPN transistor, 0.2 forward bias, then output is 0.2 reverse bias. So, forward and reverse, we call it as active region. Active region is A. Problem 7. A bipolar junction transistor works in three regions. Saturation active cutoff that we know it. If BJT use it to be an amplifier, the region works it to be is R. That means is means one region, R means more than one region. Is it working all three? No. Amplifier means active region, therefore, option is on second region only. Therefore, option is C. Option is C. Problem 8. For the circuit shown in figure below, assume beta 100 and the transistor is in what region? Active region VCU5, saturation region, active region VCU1.42, cutoff region. We need to calculate. How do you calculate? Very simple. He has given beta, apply input KVL and output KVL. Then calculate VC value. You will know which value is working out. First of all, input is forward bias. 
and the output we have to calculate. So let's go for the calculations. Apply input KVL 5 minus IB into 50 kilo minus VB minus IC plus IB into 2 kilo. Convert everything into IB because IC is beta times of IB. Solve for IB. Once you solve for IB, then go to output KVL. Output KVL comes to, you know, IB comes to as 0 0.17. Therefore, IC is beta times of IB, 1.76. If you add these two, you will get 1.723 here. In that way. And then, if you apply output KVL, 10 minus 3, k, 3 in kilo into IC minus VC minus IC plus IB into 2 kilo, you will get 1.45. So, therefore, 1.54 is what? Is a positive value. Positive given to the n trans n n terminal is a reverse bias. When it's reverse bias, it is called active region. So it is active region with 1.45 or approximately. So let's look at our options given. So 1.42. So option is C. C is the option here. Problem number nine. In the below circuit, as shown. Beta is 99, VBE 0.6. Then what are the values of VC and IC corresponding to the operating point? Very simple. The, way, the only thing that you wanted to have a twist is here in this, if IC is here, IB is here, what is the current in this? IC plus IB. So when you apply Kitchas laws, understand VCC minus IC plus IB into 2.7 minus 200 kilo into IB minus 0.7. That is one equation. Then VCC minus 2.7 into IC minus VC and solve for IB and IC. That is what I did. Apply input KVL. Calculate IC. Then IB will come. Similarly, once IC and IB come, what is VC? VCC minus 2.7 into IC plus IB. 4.66. So, he wants to calculate IC value and VCC, VC value. Option is A. Why option is A? Because 4.66 is here, is here. 4.66, 1.98. Option is A. Problem number 10. A silicon transistor with VB set 0 0.8, beta DC 100, VC set 0.2 and what is and used in the circuit shown in figure. What is the minimum value of RC for which the transistor is in saturation? And these are the values of RC given. How to calculate? As you know, for any, these are the data given 0.8 for VB set, beta 100, VC, VC set is 0.2. What's our basic thing? Calculate input current, calculate output current, compare them. Plus 5 minus 200 IB minus 0.8. Why should I say 0.8? Because he said it is in saturation. Otherwise, I will say 0.7. From there, I calculated IB. Then from output KVL, this minus 10 minus ICR, ICRC minus 0.2 here, then you will get RC value. IC you will get in terms of RC. Then what is the condition? IB is greater than IC sat by beta or beta IB is greater than IC sat. Then RC you will get from here that is approximately 4667. That is approximately 467 value. Therefore, option is P. B is the option here.